is a male. We're out here looking at Jack and the Pulpits and the um, gender neighborhoods. Um, also male. We're looking at the distributions of male and female flowers and you know whether or not there's some significance. Um, there's thought that uh, females are generally surrounded by a lot of males, which would be um, advantageous for success in pollination. We're making um, circular plots with a, a female in the center and looking to see if the jack and the pulpits in that plot are generally male or female. 5.6. And it's a male, yep. And it's a very interesting plant because it, it's able to change sex uh, depending on the time of the year and depending on the uh, environment that it's surrounded by. This is much more like, of course, the real scientific process where often we don't really know what we're going to find at any particular point in time. There's always a working hypothesis. These folks have a working hypothesis for what may happen today, and it's very well informed. They know why that might happen, but we really don't know what will happen. I have to wait a week until the data analysis is done. The plant uses weak flying fungal fly for pollination. We work together. We try to bring everybody up. But that same sense of collaboration, I think, extends to the faculty. I never feel apart from them. I often feel, as in today's lab, that we together are working on a problem. Gender is related to the corm size or the bulb size. And plants uh, that had larger corm size, uh, so plants in this region right here, tended to be female. I'm a sophomore, newly declared bio major, and I, I've been really attracted to the bio department um, all along. Point I'm getting an excellent experience and I'm getting a very, very good sense of what it means to be a scientist, what it means to be a researcher, what it means to be a biologist, um, actually conducting research.